Welcome to the first episode of the Simon Christopher Show podcast. Being that it's my first episode, it is brought to you by absolutely fucking nobody. Woo! Welcome to my first episode of the podcast I've been trying to make for literally fucking years. I just I just don't know why I never got around to it. I tried to have a nice little desk. I tried to have guests. I tried to record it and put it on the internet. I guess all I had to do was buy a cheap fucking microphone and sit in an empty room with my laptop. There's absolutely no furniture in this room. I'm staring at a shitty mattress, which I don't, I don't even want to go near it, to be honest. It's made of styrofoam with, like, tears in it. I don't, I don't, to be honest, I don't know why it's here. But Jeff wanted to keep it for something, so we have it. Anyways, welcome to the first episode of the Simon Christopher Show. This is the podcast form. It's pretty much just going to be, like, the first half of my YouTube videos. If you don't know my YouTube videos, which, I mean, why, I don't imagine why you're listening to this. If you don't know them, you could go to the SimonChristopherShow.com. But also, I don't want to start plugging shit right off the bat. This podcast is going to be pretty much the first half of those videos with me just being a fucking retard without the stunts. I'm not really going to do any stunts because you can only hear me. I'm not doing any video format for this, so it is what it is, bitches. So for the first episode, I, I just moved to Australia. I'm currently in Perth, Australia, and I've been here for about a month now from Canada. I moved from Toronto, Canada to Perth, Australia, which is confusing for most, but if you've ever experienced winter, you'll understand that you'd rather be on a beach all year round. It's fucking great here. I was here for the Australian winter in August, which blew my fucking mind. Because in Canada, the winter is in the winter time. December and shit. Christmas. White Christmas. All that kind of shit. Their winter here is, is in June, July, and August. So I come down here to visit on my birthday, hang out with some of the fellas. And they're like, oh, it's winter, man. Don't come down here. It fucking sucks. I was in the fucking ocean in my shorts, and I looked at them and go, this is the fucking winter you guys were complaining about. I'm moving here for sure. And they didn't believe me, but now I'm here, and they have to deal with me. They're stuck with me now. They have this white monkey Canuck fucking just hanging out, man, just, just playing Nintendo, you know? So the first episode, I actually kind of want to just talk about the first month in Australia, and I know that might sound fucking boring to some of you, but here's a little sneak peek. I legitimately... Thought I was going to die in China. My mom cried when I told her the story, but I'll try to tell you the more cheery version. And I lived with some meth addicts in my first month here in Australia. So, you know, strap in a little bit. Give me some, give me some, some credit that I'm not just going to bore the living fuck out of you. I don't know. I might bore the fuck out of you. Maybe you don't give a shit about China or meth addicts, but I think it's a good fucking topic for a first episode. And uh, you're going to agree or you're going to turn it off. But I mean, don't. Don't. I'm lonely. I'm in an empty room with a mattress. So I got. A, I left Toronto um, January 12th, I think, or 13th. I don't remember because it was a 40-hour flight, and uh, that you just don't know what days are after 40 hours. The, one of my flights from it was China to uh, no, sorry, it was Toronto to China, Beijing. I think it's in China. I went to Beijing. That was my first flight. Toronto to Beijing. It was 14 hours. I left at 11 something p.m. and I got to China two days later, technically. Like, I left on a Tuesday or whatever, and I got there on a Thursday because the fucking time zones and the 14 hour flight just fucked me. And now I, I missed the whole day. I have to go back to Canada to get my day back. Otherwise, I just gave it to the fucking ocean. I'm not a big fan of the ocean. They have sharks in there, and sharks kill people. So, I mean, why would I want to give them my day? So I flew to Beijing, and due to the financial status I was in, which was subpar, I got the cheapest flights I could possibly get. Now, that's important for this story, so you can realize how I looped myself up to get fucked. So I left Toronto. I flew to Beijing. My Toronto flight, like I said, was in the winter time. I left in January. So it left uh, it, during like a snowstorm. There's a snowstorm, so it was an hour and a half late leaving Toronto, and we fly the 14 fucking hours to Beijing, and I have a, I'm supposed to have a three-hour layover, but God knows what happened. I get there, and my second flight had already left. By like the time I, I got off the plane, we landed, I get off, go through all that shit, find where I'm supposed to go get my bag, all that shit. I missed my second flight. 
So I'm sitting in Beijing at a desk of these fucking Chinese people that don't know what I'm saying, which, you know, when in, when in Rome, speak Chinese. Mandarin. I know Chinese isn't a language. I'm better than that. So I was sitting there at this desk trying to speak with this broken English motherfucker, ex- wondering why my plane left when I was not late. I couldn't be late. I got there by another airplane that I was not driving. So how the fuck can I be late for my a, a flight? But they tried to explain it, that I just missed my fucking second flight. So they put me up in actually what turned out to be a very dope hotel. I got like a penthouse suite in Beijing. I had a waterfall showers and TV, two be- like two queen-size beds, a mini fridge. Like, co- like, I mean, it might sound like a normal hotel room to you, but it was fucking dope. It was massive. So I was not too torn up about it. It wasn't the worst thing that had ever happened, being put up in a free hotel room. Like, legitimately, I just signed in and fucking, well, I didn't give them a credit card or anything. I could have fucked the whole room. I jizzed in a towel and left it there. I don't give a fuck. It's, I didn't pay for it. You don't even know what my name is, for real. I could have told you my name's Luke. Whatever. Fuck you, China, you cunts. And if, I mean, that's not aggressive. I hate China, and you'll find out why soon. So I'm sitting in this hotel room. I get it. I mean, by the time I got there and had to leave again, I was only in there for like six hours, but I rubbed one out the second I got into that fucking hotel room just for the novelty of coming in a communist country. But I'm sitting in this hotel room watching like this, the most fucked up Chinese game shows, like all that shit you've ever heard of is real. All, like, I know the Japanese are like the ones who like eat fish and like electrocute people. China is like a, a diet version. It's just weird shit. I tried to Snapchat it, but I didn't have the internet. It's really fucked up. It's really weird watching TV in different countries. You think everything's kind of Americanized. You know, you know America, like the mo- Hollywood kind of puts movies all over the world, and everyone kind of just knows movies through the North American people, or so I thought. I mean, I know Bollywood is a thing, but it sounds like Hollywood. So even that is like a watered-down version of something else in North America. So I just assumed that a lot of the commercials would be a a dubbed American commercial. Maybe I'm an ignorant Canadian. Maybe I don't expect much of the Chinese show business side of things. No, they put on a great show. It was a great fucking time. I didn't even understand what the fuck they were saying. I was loving my life, watching some weird musical game show where they were just singing, dressed up like fucking idiots, rubbing one out to memories of fonder times in this hotel room that I didn't pay for, and I never will. Fuck them. So anyway, I get, I get up at like 5 in the morning. I smoke as many cigarettes as I can before I get on this next flight from Beijing to, pardon my French, I think it's Gonzao or Gonjo. I don't fucking know what it's called, and I don't care because they're cunts. I hate this town or city, whatever. The f- I don't want to give it this hole in the ground. I don't want to give it any respect. This hole in the ground piece of shit. I already knew it was going to be a piece of shit because when I was in Beijing, when I was going through like the desk before I even got to the hotel, I'm trying to talk to these guys in broken English about, like, what what do you mean my fucking, my flight's gone, you cunts? You are the same airline. You Why would you let it leave without this whole other plane of people on it? You just fucked God knows how many people. Didn't wear any condoms or, or consent. I gave you no consent. You raped me, motherfuckers. And I'm sitting there trying to tell them I don't appreciate the rape that I just experienced. And this less broken English Chinese man comes up, I guess he lived in Canada for like 10 years, but he's from China, so he was a pretty good translator. Uh, he, he was on my flight, so he was getting fucked as well, and he kind of helped me out. He ended up staying in the hotel, not hotel room, but the hotel with me. We didn't, I got my own room. I was not going to share with an old Chinaman. But I get this translator, man, and I latched onto him like a fucking baby duck latching onto something a baby duck would latch onto. I didn't let him leave. He smoked a cigarette, I smoked a cigarette. He went to the bathroom, I watched. I didn't let him out of my fucking sight because I knew no other motherfucker was going to help me in the entire airport or hotel. No one gave a shit. No one could understand what I'm saying. I'm sitting there looking at these guys saying things I know they've heard. I know they've heard every word I've said because, like I said, most of the planet is whitewashed. Or maybe, again, I'm an ignorant Canadian thinking that. I assumed that everyone can speak English in a major international airport. It made sense to me not to be a dick. I don't speak Mandarin, so I wasn't upset that they didn't speak English. I'm not an ignorant cunt, but I at least expected that English would get me a little somewhere. It did not. I got real fucked. So this guy was my only 
way out of anything. Like I said, I followed this dude around. I sat next to him on the bus. Wherever he went, I was right next to him to the point where he was kind of getting a little annoyed with me because everything anyone said, I looked at him and went, huh? And he would just try to explain it, and then he'd miss the next thing, and I'd be like, wait, what did he say? You were talking over him, China man translator. You were talking to me when he was talking, and he's more important than I am because he has a badge on. What did he say? And then he was getting mad. My translator was getting mad because he didn't understand what the fucking concierge, cop, whatever the fuck dude was saying. So we didn't know what we were doing because I'm an ignorant asshole bothering him. So I feel like he just wanted to get rid of me, but he's smaller than I am, and I can run real fast. So he did not get away from me at all. We wake up the next day after my, my penthouse fucking suite, and uh, he's just in the lobby, and he's like, oh, you made it. You made it downstairs at 5 a.m. What the fuck did you think I was going to do? You think I was going to sleep in, miss another fucking flight, and then just start paying for a hotel room or new... Yeah, I fucking made it, man. So we get on this bus, and we go to... He's telling me that, because we're both going to this Gonzo, Gonzo place, and he's saying, whatever you do, like this, this place, this city, this hellhole, is very... It's well known for being very corrupt and a high crime rate, like a lot of pickpockets in the airport. Like not even if I, I'm, no way in fuck am I going outside the airport. Even if I wanted to, I wasn't gonna. But he's like, don't go, like keep your backpack in front of you like a pregnant woman. And I said, that's stupid, but I will. And I carried my 50 pound blue suitcase around on wheels. And any motherfucker who got too close to me, I just postured up and was like, you, I'm not the person you're robbing today, bitches. You little Chinese fucks. I'll go to prison before you take my shit. So anyways, I'm not trying to be rude to Chinese people. I just had a very poor experience. Um, fucked a lot of them. So we get to this gonzo place after I'm warned that it's just a fucking corrupt little shithole. And I, you know, I get my, on a next flight, didn't pay for that. It's just kind of, the airline took care of it, sorted out, hotel room, so on get to this Gonzo place, and I don't see this translator dude again. He's out of my life forever. He just got all, he got his fucking bags, peaced out. I guess that's where he was going, or he was just, he actually was faster than me and just got to wherever the fuck he just got away from me. I never saw him again, but he did make, he did make it, he made me get where I had to go, at least halfway. So that's two flights, right? I had four flights from Toronto to Australia. I had to go from Beijing to Gonzo, Gonzo to Shanghai, and then Shanghai to Singapore, and then Singapore to Perth, I think. I don't know. It doesn't matter because I didn't go on half the flights. Because when I got to this Gonzo place, as you'll see, I got raped twice, this time viciously. Viciously, brutally gang raped by an entire nation, which I hate so much. We get to Gonzo. I get my bag. It's literally 8 in the morning at the it, local time in China, which is whatever. I don't even know what time it is for me at this point. I'm on 20 hours of travel time with 6 hours sleep because I can't sleep on airplanes because I'm too busy drinking all the free booze. So we get to the, this Gonzo airport, and I, I don't speak anything they speak, and no one speaks anything I speak. And I'm trying to find this airline called Scoot. Now, I understand no one's ever heard of it. And yes, it's Scoot. Like, scoot along, little fuckboy, which I try to do, except when I got there, my plane tickets, because I left Toronto an hour and a half early, or sorry, an hour and a half late, and then I had to stay the night in Fuckville, Beijing, and my third and fourth flight were also gone. And because they're so cheap... There's only one desk in the entire international airport. And when I tried to find the scoot desk, no one at any desk, at any information booth, at any thing to do with working in an airport had heard of this airline, let alone knew where the desk was. So I got sent to this little information booth where I spoke to about 10 people. Like, I'm not joking. There's just 10 Asian people behind the desk on their phones. I show up and they're like, hey, what's up? In Mandarin, they said that. I just can't translate. So they all, like, look at me. I'm like, hey, I'm looking for the scoot desk. And they blank-faced me. They have no idea. I mean, maybe it's just how they look because they're Asian. They don't have much expression. But also, I could tell that they, in their eyes, their little eyes, that they couldn't exactly tell what I was trying to say. They had no fucking clue. So they all just started looking at each other, shrugging, like, who wants to deal with this guy who doesn't know what the fuck he's doing? 
And I show them my little my little itinerary. I'm like, I need to go to this. And then they, they're like, Scoot isn't a thing. And I'm like, I fucking know that. I can't find it. Help me find it. Help me get the Scoot. None of them can fucking help me. So I try this little information booth where one person speaks English. And she's like, oh, we're just here to sell tickets. We don't actually do airline things. Like, I can book you a flight. I'm like, no, no, I have two flights. I want to get on them. Get me to the Scoot desk. She says, go to desk K. I'm like, okay, I'll go to desk K. I get there, and they're like, oh, the Scoot desk is actually closed for the rest of the day. And this is at, like, about 9 in the morning. And they're saying it's closed for the day, which should show you how shitty this fucking airline is. They say, hey, it's 9 a.m., boys. Let's wrap it up for the day. It's been a fucking, it's been a long one. So K Desk sends me to J Desk. Now, J Desk is the desk with the 10 people who looked at me like I was a fucking idiot. And they're like, why are you back here? And I said, because K told me to. And they said, well, you should go to the information desk. Why'd you go to K? And I said, because the information desk told me to go to K, and K told me to come to you. You motherfuckers, help me. I want to get out of your goddamn country. I have these tickets. Toronto fucked me. Beijing fucked me. You're not fucking me, too. And then they looked at me, and they said, oh, yeah, buddy. We're going to fuck you, too. And they fucked me, too. They had no idea where these fucking airlines were. Didn't know how to help me. They said the scoot desk opens at midnight, and it's 9 a.m. So they said, wait, not doing the math, a long time, like 15 hours. Who gives a shit? More than three minutes, which is the amount of time I wanted to wait. Wait till midnight and get breakfast in between that. But also wait till midnight, and then you can talk to scoot. And by the way, the information desk, because I went from J to K to information to K to I to J to information to K, and at the information, but the third time, after she's wondering why the fuck I keep showing up, and I'm like, you're the only one who speaks English that can help me. After I get back to the information for the third time, she tells me that Scoot, because of my thrifty spending habits with my airline travel, Scoot is the type of airline that if you don't get on the plane, you don't get a new plane. Because the first two airlines from Beijing and Toronto, they were a better company. When I got fucked by them, they were like, oh, we fucked you, buddy. I'm sorry. Let's unfuck you on this next plane. When I got to Guangzhou or whatever, they're like, oh, this shitty Walmart brand airline. They're not going to help you at all because you missed the flight. And I didn't do shit, my man. I didn't miss. I was not the pilot. I was not late taken off from Toronto. I didn't cause the snowstorm. I didn't make the Beijing plane leave early or not wait or whatever, however the fuck it happened. They all did that. I didn't do any of this shit. But now I'm in Gonzo. They said, your tickets, your two next flights, consider them scrapped, but also have a nice day. So I'm walking around Gonzo Airport at about 10 a.m. at this point, and I'm wondering, I mean, I, I don't even know what I'm wondering. I'm sitting around in this airport, which is four stories. It's this massive international airport. It's huge. Dozens of desks, most of which I tried to talk to. I, I talked at most of the desks and then just kind of got pointed at the other desk and then did laps around this fucking place. I'm sitting, I'm like, okay, I have this 50-pound this blue suitcase full of everything I have because I'm moving to Australia. I'm not going on vacation. I don't have an apartment in Toronto anymore. I don't have a home in Toronto. I'm moving to, I'm literally homeless. I'm literally unemployed. I'm literally sick of saying literally. I don't have shit, right? I don't even have a credit card. You may not know that about me. In fact, why would you? If you knew I didn't have a credit card, you're creepy. Stay out of my fucking personal life. But I don't have a credit card. So I'm in this, this fucking Chinese airport with no credit card at all. Not even like one, a maxed out one, like literally, figuratively nothing. Figuratively, I, I absolutely zero credit cards to my name. And my bank is with this small little abortion brand from a Canadian bank, so it's not even close to being a thing I can use in an international country. So I'm sitting there with no tickets, my entire life in these suitcases, in a communist country where it's, I was already warned that they're very corrupt and pickpockety. Basically, they said, I, I'm going to get robbed, and the things that you have are everything you have. So if you get robbed, goodbye life. You're fucked. So I'm fucking walking around this airport. I eventually, and I, I'm, 
I'm trying to make this story as short as possible. After about, not exaggerating, about six hours of going J to K to info to K to I to J to P, because fuck it, why not say what's up at P, back to L, circling. I'm not joking. I l- went to all of these desks multiple times trying to get help, and they all just said, go to the other one, because they didn't speak English. And the one I wanted to talk to didn't open up until midnight because their hours are fucked because they're Chinese. So I'm sitting in this airport. I'm starting to break, like mentally broken, because I know I don't have a flight. I know that the airline I have, I can't even talk to for another 10 hours. I have no money, even if I wanted to do anything. I had $200 on Australian. So I go back after about six hours of A to B to C to D, to the information desk with the woman who I spoke to like five times now. And I just, I pretty much just went to talk to someone in English because I didn't know what the fuck to do. So I'm talking to this woman at the desk and she barely speaks English. The only reason she knows how to speak English is because she sells tickets to everyone. And I guess she's she's the one person who I thought would be everyone. You know, international airport, speaks English, made sense to me. She's the only one who was like that of the hundred I talked to, which fucked my head so hard. So I'm talking to her just to kind of feel like I have someone to talk to at this point because I know I'm fucked. I know I have absolutely nothing. So I'm talking to her, and she's like, yeah, your, your next flights are gone. You don't have more flights. You're here now. Welcome to China. You might want to get a visa. And I said, I might want to get a noose because if I ever stay another fucking night in China, I'll kill myself and my blood will be on your hands, you fuck. So she tells me my only option really is to get another ticket to Bangkok and then to Perth because I told her I was going to Perth because she understands what Perth is. Even though she thought I said Paris, I don't blame that on me. I blame that on her poor English skills. So I finally tell her I'm going to Australia, not France. And she says, okay, well, you're probably going to have to buy another ticket. And I said, I don't have any money. And she goes, how are you going to buy a ticket? And I said, that's what I'm talking to you about. I wanted you to. That's my question. That's my question to you. How am I buying a ticket? How do I get out of your fucking country with no money and no tickets? I don't want to be here. I don't like it here. Everyone sucks. No one can talk to me. I don't want to go outside because I'll get robbed. I don't want to be here. Fuck off. Get me out. She says, and this is probably about eight hours in to my what the fuck time. She says, if you don't have any money, which I didn't, you can go to the police. The police station is right over there. It's about a three-minute, four-minute walk down the airport corridor thing that way. Go talk to the police. By law, in China, they have to help stranded tourists. Obviously, that makes sense. If you're in trouble in a country or you need help no matter what, if it's that serious, you go to the police and they'll do their best to help you, right? Makes sense. I said, they'll help me. They'll help me get to talk to Canada because you can't, no one in China, and hear my words, motherfuckers, no one in China can talk to anyone outside of China on a phone, most likely on the internet, unless you know some fancy tricks. But I could not get on Wi-Fi because I didn't have a credit card to get on the airport Wi-Fi. And even if I got on the airport Wi-Fi, I couldn't use Facebook because it's banned. I couldn't use Twitter because it's banned. I couldn't use Instagram because it's banned. I couldn't go on any social media because it's banned. Why is it banned? Because it's a communist country, and what lives in China fucking dies in China. And I thought I was going to be a part of that statistic. So I go to the fucking police station. I walk in, and there's about probably eight, uniformed police officers. Three of them were dealing with a homeless Chinese guy who was like 80 years old, just drunk out of his fucking mouth. And there's me, a chipper, white, suicidal boy covered in tattoos, which I didn't realize was such a fucking mistake to show those off because tattoos over there mean you're a criminal. So I walk into the police station pretty much with I rob bitches written on my shirt I didn't even like introduce myself. I just went like straight into the story. I walk in and I go, hey everyone, I don't have any airplane tickets or money. I am fucked here. Can you guys help me talk to Canada? And there's a room full of people just turn to me and look at me and they started like talking in Asian. And I'm not making this up. This is very, very serious. I very literal of what happened. As they started like kind of talking like Mandarin or what Cantonese to each other, I go, I kind of interrupted. I go, oh. 
You don't speak English at all. Well, I'm going to go kill myself in your lobby. I'll see you. And I grabbed my shit and I just left. I walked out of the police station after telling them I'm going to commit suicide publicly in their airport. They didn't give a fuck because they didn't know what I was saying. So I walked back to the information desk. I'm like, oh, they don't understand what I'm saying. And she said, did you try? And I said, kind of. And she said, well, you're probably going to have to buy another ticket or you can go back and we'll let you use your phone. It's up to you. And I said, all right, let me give this another shot. So I go back. I go back to the police station and I try you know, a little more of a subtle approach. I go in there and say, hey, guys, sorry about that. Does anyone speak English? And they kind of like look around. One guy comes forward. He's like, a little bit. Everyone, that's everyone's response. Little bit. That's all they like. That's the little bit they know is to say they know a little bit. After it's like, it's like, do you know English? Little bit. Oh, okay. Well, how are you doing? Oh, and they go off in their little fucking ching chang. I don't. I mean, if all you know is in another language is to say, I know a little bit. Just say no. Learn how to say sorry, man. Sorry, homie. That guy over there, maybe. Just learn that. Don't. Don't say a little bit and give me hope and then make me realize I'm an idiot for thinking that maybe you know what I'm saying. Even if it's basic shit, come see, come saw. See, I know what that means kind of. So I go to this, the Chinese airport again. I get the one, or the police station. I get the one guy who can kind of understand what I'm saying. And I say, hey, man, I need to call Canada. I don't have any tickets. I missed my flights. Not my fault. He didn't get that. He just, he just saw tattoos. I said, I missed my flights because of a delay in the snow in Canada, and now I don't have any tickets. I don't have any money. I need to call Canada to get some new tickets. Can you help me? And he said, you need to call Canada? And I said, I said that three times now, but yes, yes. I was being nice. I said, yes, I need to call Canada. Thank you. Let me call Canada. He goes in the little office, or I guess like the fucking sergeant's office or whatever they call him there, and he goes in there for like, way longer than he should have, like 10 minutes. I don't think he gave a fuck. He came back out with his phone in his hand. Like, he's playing, like, Bejeweled or some shit. He didn't give a fuck. He comes out, and I'm not, I don't make shit up. He goes, how much money do you have? And I said, none. That's the problem. I need to call Canada for money. And he goes back, and another guy comes over. He goes, how much money do you have? And I said, none. He goes, we can't help you. They just left. And I sat there, staring at them, and they ignored me. And then I just like, hey guys, uh, please. <laughs> I just like, I, I'm like, if you're, you're if, you, if I need your help and you're gonna say no, and I have no other option, I'll try twice. I don't give a fuck. I said, guys, I need, I just need like, you know, an email or something, like just like anything, internet, like give me just shoot like a text or uh, anything. I just need to call Canada to get some tickets uh, because I don't have any and I'm fucked. And they turned to each other and they were in this little group and they started laughing and turning like kind of half turning to me and laughing. And I don't know, I don't remember now because it's been so long what they said, but at the time, I remember what they said and I find out that it w they called me a white monkey and they started laughing at me like poor white monkey because I was stranded in their fucking shit communist country. So that, well, I mean, I didn't piss me off at the time, but once I found it out, it real pissed me off. So I'm like, okay, these guys, I'm a joke here. So uh, they're not going to give a fuck. See ya. I'm going to go back and kill myself for real. So I go back to the information desk, and I go, okay, cops don't give a fuck. They laughed at me, and she goes, they can't do that. And I said, you tell them that. You tell them they can't laugh at me. She's just like, well, your only other option is that you can buy a new air ticket or new plane tickets. And I said, okay, I'll play ball lady. I don't have any other fucking options. How much is a fucking airline ticket to Perth? Bangkok, don't give a fuck. How much? When's it leave? She said, leaves in three hours, 4100 And I told her to get fucked. And then she informed me that it was 4100 yen, or I don't know what the Chinese, I don't give a fuck what the Chinese money is anymore. Whatever the Chinese people buy shitty, shitty products in their shitty, shitty country with, that, 4100 of those. So I go, oh, don't give a fuck how much it is here. How much is it? in Canadian, and she said, it's $670 in American, and I said, I didn't ask about American, I said, Canadian, I want to know in fucking Canadian, how much is it, and she goes, it's $670 American, oh, I, okay, well, fuck you too then, so I go to the, every ATM I can find, because there's only like three in the whole fucking airport, and I'm like, okay, fuck it, I'll play ball with you bitches, because I, I have a bit of money, I just didn't have any cash, but I didn't want the fucking corrupt-ass, shitty-ass, cock-sucking police to know that. 
So I, I go to these ATMs and I put in my card and it says fucking fuck yourself. Put in the next one, fuck yourself. And I put in like three or four, fuck yourself. And then I realize they're all the same bank. It's just like the bank of shit land and there's four. So I find a different bank. I put my card in the thing and I said, I don't know how much money money is here. Like if I put it, if I, I don't know. I, I didn't do math. So I'm like, I'll just put in, I'll take out 500 of whatever and then I'll at least have 500 of whatever, right? And I can get like, you know, McDonald's or something. So I take out 500 things and it comes out in their shitty dog eating fucking money. And I'm like, okay, cool, sweet. I have 500 shit dollars. That's a start. I need 4,100. I have six plus some Aussie money. Maybe we'll do a little deal. Uh, I got 500. Cool. Put the card back in the machine. Take out fucking 4,000 bucks. That way I have some money to eat or something. Take out 4,000. Declined. Not because of my, I didn't have enough money. Because it said card issuer has declined transaction. Now, to me, that means my bank account in Canada went oh, Simon never told us that he was going to China and they just took out $500 on his card. We should for sure freeze that because that's fraud. And we'll write him an email and he can deal with it. So I'm sitting there with $500 in shit country land money and $200 in Australian, which I know won't be close to an airfare ticket. I'm like, okay, well, fuck me real hard. I go back to the desk and I said, I have this. I have 500 of these dollars. 200 of these dollars, do your little math, tell me how much I need, and then also, I'll suck your old lady pussy if you, let, if you just like hook me up and help me get out of this country and just buy my ticket. And luckily, she didn't understand that. So she tells me, that's about, I don't give a fuck how much money, it was probably like 100 bucks, right? No, I don't know, like 300 bucks. I think like the 500 shitland is like nothing. You can do the math. So it was not even close to enough. So I go, well, fuck me into a coma, And I go back to the ATMs. I'm like, maybe there's like a hiccup. Maybe like there's an ATM problem. Try again. Try the same bank with a different ATM. Card declined. Fuck yourself, Simon. No other money. All of my money was in that one bank account for that one card because in Australia, my bank in Canada and the Australian banks are connected. So there's no like service fees or anything. So I dumped all of my fucking money into that one account, which now has a go fuck yourself sign on it. And I'm sitting there wishing I had a gun. I was going to fight a police officer, hoping they would just shoot me in the fucking mouth and put me out of my misery. So I'm just sitting there. I'm thinking, okay, what the fuck do I do? It's been about nine, nine fucking hours at this point. I'm like, okay, fuck it. Fuck it. I'm just going to, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to get the internet, whatever. I end up walking around just random stores like Subway. The fucking sandwich artist didn't speak any fucking English. McDonald's just kept pointing at the menu, being like, that? I'm like, no. Money. Give it to me. Like, I pretty much was, like, on the verge of robbing people. And I just wanted, I just, I was like, just give me, arrest me. Cool. And then at least if I get arrested in China, I'll get some kind of lawyer, maybe. Or I'm sure you'll contact the, like, something. You know, and the reason I didn't go to the embassy is because of the high crime right there. I'm not carrying around a backpack and a fucking 50 pound suitcase in a country what's gonna rob me for sure, where the police call me a white monkey and I don't know where the fuck I'm going and no one can speak English to help me. Why the fuck would I leave my sanctuary of an airport? Fuck you, listeners. If you think I'm an idiot for not leaving, I would be a fucking cuck if I did leave. So I stayed in the airport, and I just did laps, and I was looking for anyone who could speak English. At this point, it was just to complain. It was just to be like, I'm going to die here. I legitimately accepted my death, and I mean that in the most literal sense. I looked at my wallet. I knew that I couldn't take out more money because my bank had frozen. it. I knew that because it happened. I knew I didn't have any plane tickets because they told me that. I knew if I went outside, I'd get fucking robbed. So at this point, I just wanted someone to talk to just to take my mind off of it until I got hungry to eat. And then I'd take my mind off of it somehow. And then I'd eat. And when my money was gone, I would die of starvation in the airport. That was my mental plan based off of my real life analysis of my situation. I had no way out of the airport. I had nowhere to go. No one to help me. No one spoke English. The government and the police make fun of me and call me a white monkey. What the fuck do I do except eat my money away and then die? 
That's what I was planning on doing. That's what I accepted. And that's why I was just looking for someone to talk to to kill the time. Legitimately went to these little stores, hoping to find someone with some downtime who spoke English to just talk to, pass the time. So I go to all these little stores, and they're busy doing something, or they don't speak English. And I go to this car rental shop thing. You know, like at airports, you can just rent cars for new people who know what they're doing and actually planned on being there. You can just rent cars. I just, I just walked into one of those. Fuck it. I have nothing else to do. Nowhere to be at this point. Plenty of downtime to just hang out and shoot the shit. So I walk into these, one of these places. It's just the, the two girls, probably like 18, 20. I don't know their age. They could have been 50. And they're just in there kind of just hanging out, not doing much. I'm just like, hey, English? And they said, oh, a little bit. And I said, oh, I've heard this fucking one before. I'm like, I'll give it a shot because they're pretty nice. They seemed helpful. And I said, how are you doing today? Just testing the waters, right? How are you doing today? Oh, good. Just blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. So you want you, I, I roped them in. I seduced them into my world. Okay, so you understand enough English to deal with me for five minutes. Here's what I'm doing. And I just like, told them about my, my lack of plane tickets. I didn't mention the white monkey thing because the girls and the police are probably on the same team. So I left that part out. I didn't want to shit talk the country too much. So I'm just talking to them about whatever. And I, I mentioned like I'm fucked and like, oh, you should, you should use WeChat, which is like, it's like the Chinese WhatsApp, I guess. And they're like, oh, use this and, and contact Canada. And I said, what the fuck makes you think anyone in Canada has WeChat? You fucks. Everyone has Facebook because that's the biggest one you can have. Not a rip-off Chinese novelty version, you cuck. And all this time, I'm, I'm trying to explain to them how fucked I am. They're helping me with the internet uh, for no reason in my head. And there's this one black dude just sitting there kind of staring at me. And then when he's done doing his thing, he comes over and talks to me. He goes, hey, man, you, you really that fucked right now? And I said, why the fuck would I be making this shit up, my man? And he tells me he's been in my situation, but 10 times worse. And I laughed and said, good fucking luck. Tell me your story. I got time. And he actually was in pretty much my exact same situation. This super nice South African fella had been in my situation, except he was in the airport for two full days. And I had only been there for 12 hours. And I'm wondering if I was going to beat his high score. So he's telling me his story. It's pretty much the same thing. Airlines got canceled. No one helped him. He didn't have any contact, anything, shit like that. And I'm like, so what the fuck did you do? And he's like, I was here for two days. And I'm like, yeah, but you weren't here for three. So what the fuck did you do? And he just he told me he went up to a counter. Uh, he was just frustrated, hungry, tired. He went up to a, a counter and demanded he gets out of this fucking country. And I said, I can't do that. I tried. And he said, no, no, no. You asked. You have to demand. And I'm like, okay, I'll go up to this fucking, this bitch at the info desk. Like, give me a goddamn airfare ticket. And she's going to tell me, no, fix that problem for me, my man. So basically, wow, I went super shoe nice on that. So pretty much what happened, to kind of start wrapping this shit up, he just took me to all the ATMs. He's like, okay, you need $4,100 to get out of this fucking hellhole. And I said, yeah. And by the way, we were together like a couple hours at this point. I was in China for a long fucking time. We were hanging out for a couple hours. I told him the whole story. He told me his story. We got something to eat. And at this point, he's like, okay, let's get you the fuck out of here, my man. So we go to this info. I'm like, yes, please. We go to this info desk. And I'm, I'm like, okay, this lady says 4100 bucks for a ticket or 4100 shit dollars for a ticket. I have 500 shit dollars and 200 Australian. Sort me out, homie. And he goes, okay, well, we're going to go to every bank in every ATM, and we're going to get your money. And I said, I can't do that. My cards are all frozen because of fraud. I know that. And he says, you don't know that. You just know it didn't work in that one machine. And I said, why the fuck would it not work in that one machine when it worked for the first one and then not the second one? What the fuck? And he says, okay, then don't try the machines. Or try them, de get declined, and then figure it out. So I said, I like where your head's at. Better to try than to not try and be a bitch. So we walk, again, I had nothing else to do. So we walk around this whole airport, and he's just going up to anyone who works there going, hey, where's the Bank of China? Where's the fucking ATM? This, trying to translate. ATM, bank. He was like doing the mime with the card and taking the cash out, like doing the whole charades thing, trying to get us an ATM. I guess his charades are good enough because he got us to a couple, actually. And the first couple were the ones I had already tried. They didn't work. They did not work at all. He just kept trying. He's like, fuck it, dude. Just keep trying. What else are you going to do? And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, my man? Why are you just in this airport? He was in the car place just to see 
so he was just checking something, like just like randomly, just checking to see if he could rent some car or something on a certain day. Happened to be in there, and he happened to have heard my story, and he happened to have nothing else to do. So he was with me probably six hours total, and he just took me to all these ATMs, and eventually we found one that worked. And then he's like, just try this one. It's around the corner. I pulled my card in. I just like, fuck it, a, a thousand, whatever, right? It's not enough, but also I didn't expect it to work, so I'm like, just fuck it, a thousand. And it pops out a thousand bucks. And this is after a couple hours. Like, I'm really trying to paraphrase the story, even though it's going on forever. This is a while we're doing this, just ripping around the airport, kill myself, kill myself, ATM, kill myself, kill myself, declined, kill myself. So eventually, we find one, it, it pops out a thousand, and I turn to him, I'm like, Dude, you fucking figured it out. I this ATM fucking works. I have a thousand bucks. It's not even close to half, but I have it. And he goes, put your card back in, try it again, get your money, get out. And I'm like, you are a fucking guardian angel. What are the fucking chances I happen to meet you in that little car shit store and then you just fucking rick rip me around this airport and get me my fucking money. Like, I wanted to open mouth kiss this man, except I'm straight. He's from South Africa, so I assume he fucking cut my head off. So I put my card back in the machine. I'm, like, uh, doing the quick math. I'm, like, okay, I got 1500 I need, I don't know, let's call it 3000 more so I have, like, money because I don't know how much a fucking Big Mac is. It could be $700 for all I know. So I'm just, like, okay, 3000 That way I'll have 4500 I know the ticket's 4100 Fuck it. Let's go. So I take it out, and the fucking money comes out. And I swear to God, at this point, I wanted to cry, because I'm not joking. This is about 12 hours of suicide. Suicidal, legitimate thoughts that I was going to... Ex I accepted my death, and this guy picked me up and dragged me around the airport, and he fucking figured it out. He got me out of this country. He got me the fucking money that I needed for a plane ticket to go to Bangkok and then go to Perth. He actually fucking did it. I didn't. I thought my credit cards were canceled because of the machine. And he's just like, fuck it. Why not just try it? It's, the worst that's going to happen is it'll say declined, which it did about 10 times. And eventually we found one that fucking worked. And I was honestly going to cry with this fucking dude who actually got me out of this country. And then I remembered what the Asian man in Beijing told me, which was that there's a very high crime rate in Gonzhou. And there's a lot of pickpockets and thieves. And I'm here with a South African man, not to be racist or anything, but he's, you know, he's, a, he's not from China. Even if he was, he's still, he still could be a crook. But he's a tourist. He, he saw someone insanely desperate, looking desperately to empty his bank account. For all I know, this motherfucker was going to jump me. For all I know, he heard my story and went, if I help this guy empty his bank account to get a ticket, I could just beat the living fuck out of him, and I'd have 4500 shit dollars. And that really crossed my mind the second that money came out of the machine. So I stuff it in my wallet. And I'm not joking. This guy spent I was talking to this guy for about four hours. For all I know, he was a key. He could have been a con man. So I'm walking around this airport and I, I'm not joking. I stayed about five feet behind him the whole time with my hand on my wallet in case he had a buddy scoping us or something. I had all the money in my back pocket in my wallet. And I was holding on to my butt the whole time, carrying my suitcase in my backpack, behind him while he led the way to the place I knew where to go. I'm like, oh, it's just down there, that thing over there. He'd walk. I'd just kind of slowly trail behind him because I didn't want him coming up to me or coming up behind me, knocking me over the fucking head. God knows what, right? I legitimately thought this guy could have been just there to rob me. And then I would have absolutely nothing because I'm pretty sure that was most of my fucking bank account. So we, he, he leads me to the, the info desk where I, that woman who spoke English enough and didn't really help me but also kind of helped me uh, said I could only buy plane tickets there, who told me it was 4100 She was there still, actually. And he takes me there, and we're, we're talking to her. I said, hey, remember that flight to Perth, Bangkok, 4100 I want it. I got money now. Hook it up. And she goes, okay, types it in. And she goes, 4,300. And I said, bitch, you said 4,100. She goes, 4,300. She presses the calculator and said, this much American. And I said, I don't give a fuck how much it is American. We've been over this. Here's $4,300. You cunt. Give me my fucking plane tickets. And she gave me my plane tickets. I put them in my backpack. I looked at the guy and said, if you were going to rob me, motherfucker, you missed your chance. Let's get something to eat. And we go to Subway. And I buy this guy 
whatever the fuck he wanted after being with me for six hours, listening to my shit, taking me by the hand all over this fucking airport, gets me my money, gets me these tickets. We smoked cigarettes together. We had lunch together. We shot the shit. We talked about life. Turns out he's a super religious guy. Uh, He was just doing it because he literally fucked me. He had actually had been in that circumstance before, wanted to help me out. So I'm internally in debt to this motherfucker, even though he wouldn't tell me his name because he didn't want me to try to contact him and pay him back, which also raised some suspicions on why he wouldn't even, like, you'll spend the whole day with me, but you don't want to be my friend on Facebook. Something's up, but don't care. Whatever. So I got all these this plane tickets, and we're just chilling now at this point. We're talking about Pulp Fiction. We're talking about movies, whatever. And the time comes for me to get on the airplane. They said, be here at like, you know, what, fucking 6.30 or whatever. Be here, be at the gate at like 6.30. Your plane's at 7.30. Go through customs. You'll be fine. So I quarter after six happens. I said, dude, I don't ever want to leave you because you fucking saved my life. But I got to go on these planes and fuck fuck knows I don't want to miss another one. He goes, dude, fucking get on that plane, my man. And I said, this is like a fucking movie. I'm pretty, I'm comfortable with my sexuality. I'm a straight guy. Um, earlier in the day, I made a ref, a, a joke about like, dude, I'd fucking hug you, but I think you, I, I think you might punch me in the mouth. He goes, yeah, we don't do that where I come from. So I was right. I was right. If I, if I tried to like hug this dude, he would probably try to fight me. But at the end of like our six hours together, when I was at the gate leaving to go through customs and like we were saying bye, he actually hugged me. He hugged me goodbye and we just like, we just peaced out. It was fucking real weird. I'm like, this South African homophobic man just fucking hugged me and, and now I'm leaving him. I feel like we just changed each, the, uh, each other's lives a little bit and we just like shook hands. We did like a, a, the most white black man handshake, peaced out and we took about five steps away from each other. He went towards the crowd. I went to towards the boarding thing and I swear to God just like in a fucking movie we both at the same time turned back to each other saw each other made eye contact smiled and waved just like some like weird heterosexual rom-com bromance movie goodbye scene it was the weirdest fucking thing and we just like laughed and we just kept going and I didn't turn back maybe he did a second one I don't know I might look like an asshole I got on the airplane I went to Bangkok. I have zero recollection of Bangkok. I have no, even as I'm saying this right now, I don't remember any of Bangkok. I don't remember what I did there. I don't remember being happy, sad, tired, depressed, hungry, nothing. I just remember when I landed in Perth and saw the Perth skyline, I wanted to suck its dick. I wanted to find the dick of the skyline, which is probably the tallest building in the skyline, and I wanted it down my throat. I was so fucking happy. I got randomly selected at customs in Australia for whatever the fuck reason, and I was so fucking happy. I said, you you motherfuckers can look at whatever you want in my bags. I got nothing to hide. Just let me into your country. I almost died in China. I thought I was fucking dead. And the customs dude, I, I'm not, I actually did say that. I said, you can see whatever the fuck you want. I thought I was going to die in China. Whatever you need, take as long as you want. I'll be right here. I almost fucking died. Just let me be in your country. He goes, you actually fucking, like, you, what, really? And I said, yeah, dude. I was stranded there. I had no money. I was, I thought I was going to fucking die. And he looked at me and went, it's all right, mate. You're in Australia. Now you're safe. And I wanted to suck his dick, too. I was going to deep, double deep throat a whole fucking nation at that point. I was just so happy to be in fucking Australia. And then I get here, fucking aces. I get on the outside the airport in Perth, finally get the internet, Wi-Fi in, in Australia, like a, you know, a real country. And I Facebook call my mom and I give her like the five second story, which is pretty much like I'm going to fucking die in China. Apparently, for some reason in China, I didn't mention this because I forgot until now. When I was in China, if you connect to their internet for like a second you'll get like a a notification of like Instagram or something. I was like, oh, fuck the internet. And then I click on it and it would just cut me off. But it would have like this little like half second glitch where it connects and then it updates some shit. And it's like, oh, wait, you can't, you didn't pay for it. Fuck off. There's like that little pocket of time. And I would have messages sent to my mom and Facebook and just be like, I'm going to fucking die. Or I text her or something. I'm like, I'm going to fucking die in China. Bye. Literally wrote that. I'm going to fucking die in China. Bye. And I guess one actually sent somehow. I guess it was a text or I don't know. I don't know how it fucking happened. But she got it. 
and I get off the plane, connect to Wi-Fi, and it's just a, a fucking novel of, what do you mean you're going to die in China? Where are you? You're supposed to be in Australia 12 hours ago. Why haven't you called me? Are you okay? Is everything okay? And I met, call her on Facebook because I don't have a data plan or anything like that. Call her on Facebook, Messenger, voice chat thing, and she's like, where have you been? And I said, I almost fucking died, and I told her the whole story. She started crying a little bit because it's a lot darker. I'm trying to make this a little more upbeat, even though I don't know if it's going very well because it's a fucking, it's not an upbeat story. But I tell her the whole fucking thing. And then one of the guys who works at the airport, like a baggage handler or a security dude, he comes up. He goes, man, I overheard your story. You should turn that into a fucking movie. <laughs> it's like trapped in China. And I said, I don't ever want to think about this fucking story ever again, my man. I want this to be out of my mouth. I'm going to get blinding homeless drunk tonight just to forget this thing ever happened. And then I thought I'd make a podcast and tell the whole fucking story all over again. Now I'm in Australia. That is the end of the first episode of the Simon Christopher Show podcast. I can't be fucked to keep talking. Next week, I'm going to tell you about how I, I lived with fucking meth addicts. That's not a joke. They were legitimate meth addicts. And how I snuck out in the middle of the night, breaking my lease to move in with my friend Jeff Abel. As you may know him from Children of Poseidon or Jeff Abel and Friends, we now live in an apartment together. And for the first time in a month of Australia, I finally feel like I don't want to fucking kill myself Tune in next week, pussies. I'm going to go smoke so many fucking cigarettes. Subscribe on iTunes. Follow me on Instagram at The Simon Christopher Show. Go to thesimonchristophershow.com for my web show where I fucking actually do try to kill myself, but with a smile on my face. It's usually a pretty good time, except for that one time where I wanted to do something fucked up because I was in a bad mood. I'm not going to tell you which video that was because I don't want to ruin it. Thank you so fucking much for listening to my long-winded story. I realize I probably ranted and raved and spoke real fucking fast. I hope you caught most of it. If you didn't, listen to it again, download it, put it in some fucking slow-motion program. I don't know if there is one. I'm sure you could probably do something. Tune in next week. For sure, go to my Instagram at the Simon Christopher Show. That's where I'm going to probably promote most of these things. When a new episode comes out, I'll post it there. Find me on Facebook at the Simon Christopher Show. Search it. Follow it. Suck my dick. Thank you so much for listening. I'm going to keep doing this a lot. I'm going to have more things to talk about, more jokes, but I thought it would be a good introduction to kind of tell you my last month of being fucked in China. And uh, I'm just running out of time, so... I'll save the meth heads for next week. Uh, peace out, bitches. <laughs>